Good to see you. Thanks to everybody who's joining us online. I've got uh, several announcements that I want to cover this morning. Um, if you all haven't heard, um, Ms. Hannah Henderson passed away uh, several days ago. Um, visitation will be today at the Owens Funeral Home on Dixie Highway from 3 to 8, and there will be a memorial service here tomorrow. Uh, visitation will be from 10 to 11, and then we will have her service here at 11 o'clock, and it'll be followed by uh, the graveside service there, and then the family will be coming back here um, for a, a bereavement meal and a time of fellowship with their family. Uh, which also, if we got a couple of guys who could hang around today and help set up some tables for that tomorrow after church, if y'all wouldn't mind, uh, help Linda Joe out and she'll show you. She'll show you what to do. <laughs> if a couple of you could just help set up some tables and chairs in preparation for that tomorrow, because it'll it'll be fairly early when they when we get started. Um, also, don't forget the United Methodist women are still collecting underwear this month for the month of December, and that ends next Sunday. So if you're going to contribute to that in some way, next Sunday is the last day for that. And I'm sure you all are aware of the uh, horrible weather we had the other night and how that devastated uh, parts of our state. A lot of the western part of the state, and I understand Bowling Green, suffered quite a bit too, and probably everything in between there. Um, in, in a way for us to, I feel like as a church, we should respond to some way. Uh, and most of the emails that I've gotten so far say that we don't have a real clear direction on what is needed, uh, how everything is needed. There's still, it's more of a recovery and rescue effort right now than it is a rebuild effort. So it may be another week or so before we get a better idea of how we can help. So I thought of one way that we could help initially. Uh, that we can get started, and that's with Christmas Eve. On Christmas Eve night, we normally don't do an offertory, and I think we'll take a collection that night, on Christmas Eve night, and we'll set all that money aside to send it to some place where it's going to be needed. And I, I think in another, by the time Christmas Eve gets here, we'll have a better idea where that money needs to go. We could always send it to UMCOR or somebody like that, but I would really like it to go directly to some local place that's going to can put it right to use. So we'll, we'll take up a collection on Christmas Eve and we'll send all that money and we'll figure out a place later where we can send it. You got a question? Right. Yeah, the, the, the church is working on all that stuff too. They're, they're, they're pulling all that together, but they just don't have um, an, an idea where all that and what the needs are going to be just yet. They said if you wanted to send anything, you could send money right now, but uh, I think we'll, we'll wait till Christmas Eve. We'll make a collection and we'll have a better idea where we can send it, where it will have a good, a good impact, and, and we'll, we'll let the church maybe help guide us in that direction. Also, Sarah West's family is, uh, still lives down in western Kentucky in that area, and, and they've had some impact on that. So we want to continue to pray for all of those people. And uh, man, there's so much devastation, and, and the people who are going to then rebuild and try to help them recover, and the ministers that they'll need along the way to help nurture people. Yes, ma'am? Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. Well, that's great. And Kathy has a lot of family in Western Kentucky, and, and, and they have family and friends impacted by all that. So we, we really got a connection to that, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll react to that in a, in a good way. And we'll start with Christmas Eve offering. I think that's all the announcements. Did I miss anything, Linda Joe? Don't forget today, if y'all anybody's going to the wedding, Chuck and Sheila's wedding is today, 2.30 at the Belknap Event Center in Prospect. Um, if anybody's going to that, and um, I have a, a one prayer concern, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Any other announcements we need to cover this morning? Good to go. All right. If you wouldn't mind, please, let's stand together and we'll say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated, please. Thank you. On this third Sunday of Advent, as we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of joy. When Christ comes into our lives, he brings the fullness of joy. He anoints our hearts with the oil of gladness. When Jesus was born, the angels said that his coming was good news of great joy for all people. Because Christ has come to us, we can live every day in the joy of the Lord. Luke 2.10 tells us, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Understand one of my prayer concerns this morning. I understand that that you all know Dallas was in the hospital with uh, some issues they had, and um, he was doing better. Got to come home and had a gallbladder. Is that right? Gallbladder attack. I, th- I think it's what uh, I got from the uh, from the prayer chain. So we want to continue to to lift Dallas up in prayer. He is uh, battling a, a host of issues. Um, we want to continue to pray for him. Any other prayer concerns? have this morning anybody on your heart anybody got a word of praise this morning no all right well i invite you then yes, I, I agree i you know I, I was talking to sarah earlier today and i said it's it's, it's strange when something like that happens well, our hearts break for the people who are involved, but we're so happy ourselves that, that, that we're all okay. It, it's, a weird, it's a weird thing that we experience when that happens. Um, but let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we just uh, want to say thank you for this day. We have gathered once again as, as this body of Christ in this your church and many who gather with us online they, in spirit we come together for our time of communal worship we come here to sing your praises we come to lift up prayer and we just want to take this opportunity to praise you to say we love you we are grateful for your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus, and that through Him you have made all things possible. Father, it is with a heavy heart that we we admit, we confess, we have all sinned. We have... uh, 
we have not kept the commandments in the way that Jesus had given them to us. We have not loved you with our whole hearts, and we certainly have failed to love one another. We are all guilty of loving the things of this world. We have often prioritized the things of this world over our relationship with you. We ask, we pray for forgiveness of our sins, but also a renewal of our hearts. Renew our hearts to be more like Christ. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for, but our hearts, they do grieve. They go out to all those who who suffer in the wake of this recent, this recent tornado outbreak. It impacted so much of our state. Some lost their lives. Families have been shattered. Homes have been lost. Lives have really been devastating. And we want to lift them all up in prayer. We want to pray for those who continue to work diligently in, the, in any rescue efforts. There will be a time of cleanup and a time of restoration. And that will all soon begin. We just pray for your peace and your comfort and your guidance through it all. Lord, we want to continue to pray for our world. We want to continue to pray for our local communities, our neighborhoods. They still suffer from poverty. There's still so much violence and crime. There's still people, children who go to bed hungry and homelessness. but we will not cease in our efforts to impact that. We will not cease in our efforts to pray for your will to be done in all communities and by all people. As we say this prayer each week, Father, that's what we pray for. We pray for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. So be with us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you, if you stand, if you're able, please, as we sing our song of worship. The words will be on the screen.
Anybody else, when you hear that song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, does anybody else think of the Peanuts Christmas movie? You know where they sing it at the end of Charlie Brown Christmas? They're all standing around there singing. But anyway, your pastor's a little weird. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for the gift of life, for the gift of family, for the gift of love, for the gift of your church. And it's uh, that time we give back what you have blessed our lives with. And we just ask that you teach us to be good stewards with it. In Jesus' great name.
please. This morning's scripture comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Again, I think this is uh, some of our familiar scripture text, uh, Christmas text. If you wouldn't mind, if you're able, please, as we stand, as we share the gospel together. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Holy One The Holy Spirit will come on you and the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, who is going to have a child in her old age and said, who was said to be unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. It's the word of God for the people of God, we say, Thanks be to God. Thank you. Be seated, please. So the video that I have to show you this morning, and we're going to watch that here in just a few minutes. Again, it looks at Christmas, this Christmas story, from a little bit of a different, different angle. While the, the Bible doesn't specifically talk about Mary's parents, it's reasonable for us to assume, first of all, that she had parents, Right? And second of all, because of her shield, she was still a young age, still a very young teenager. She was probably still very close to her parents. And, and I think because Mary ended up having this very, let's call it a unique calling on her life, it, it changed her future from maybe what she thought it might be. And her parents likely now had some expectations of what their daughter's future might look like, right? Normal parents do that, don't we? We have expectations about our kids, about what they're going to grow up and what they're going to do and what they're going to accomplish and how we think their life is going to go. Where the expectations uh, for Mary during her time may be drastically different because of the time in which they live because of the, the, her culture that she was brought up in and the customs of that day, what, what we expect out of our daughters today may be drastically different. But I think it's normal that as parents we have expectations of our children, what their life may look like. And when those expectations aren't realized, right, sometimes our kids throw us a curveball, right? They don't always do what we think they're going to do. That can take us back a little. We can get a little shocked by that. We can be in a little bit of disbelief. And then we have to adjust to that and and realize that it's their life. But as we go through this sermon series, as we continue, what I want to keep doing is connecting all of the sermons together. Because the scriptures are all connected. They all tell a complete story. And each week there's just a different emphasis on how these stories are connected and how we see God interacting in the life of these biblical characters, but also how we see God interacting with us in our lives. The first week, we talked about how everybody has a role in God's plan, and I think we can clearly see Mary's role in all of this. Last week, we talked about indecision, 
Sometimes we have trouble when God places a calling on our life. We have trouble making those decisions. And Mary talks about that a little bit too. She's troubled at first by what she hears. And in the video that we're going to watch, you can see how Mary's mother was a little bit troubled by what Mary told her. How Mary told her that God had placed this calling on her life and what was going to happen going forward. And maybe it was because the plans that she had for her daughter now weren't going to be realized. But let's, let's watch this quick video. It's a couple of minutes. This is one of my favorites. Um, and then we'll, we'll move on. We'll talk about it a little bit more. Can we watch the video? silent partner that arrives with one's first child. Every mother is acquainted. Worry. When one is young, one prays. When one becomes a mother, one burns the midnight oil. You know what I speak of. My back, my hip, gifts from my first child. was such an easy child. And then she met this quiet carpenter. Nice enough young man. Though her father and I worried if he could provide. That soon became the least of our worries. She, uh, she came to me quietly one morning talking of angels trying to explain this child that she had conceived. Mind you, every Jewish girl's dream is to be chosen to give birth to the one. Yet I could hardly bear to listen. It's one thing to conceive out of wedlock, but this story... How could she lie to her own mother? What have you done? I said to her over and over. I screamed. Words that haunt me every day. This, this is how I greeted the long awaited savior of our people. When I finally understood, when I finally believed, an ecstasy spilled out of me. Had it been there this whole time? I was to be the grandmother of the Messiah. I don't know what I expected after that. Perhaps a more suitable birth plan for a king and his mother. But what do I know? I know this. The very first thing I said to my sweet Mary was, what have you done? Such a useless question. What I should have said was let's see what God can do. Yes, indeed. Look what God has done. really like that video. I think that's a plausible portrayal of what Mary's mother, the way she may have reacted, could have reacted. We don't know. I 
think that over the last few years, that's one thing that I have discovered, is that when uh, God puts a calling on your life, calls you in some new direction, that not only affects you, it affects everybody around you. And sometimes, the people around you struggle with it more than you do. Such as what you saw play out there in the video. So as we talk about this scripture today, this scripture from Luke, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this calling on Mary's life and some of the ways how that played out in her life, and then look at it again from how God's calling plays out in our own lives. Because we all have a role to play, remember? So we've all got a calling in some way. And so I've, I've kind of broken this down into three different sections of God's calling in our life. And the first phase, well, Mary described it good. She was troubled by what she heard. When we first hear God speak to us, we think, what? What, in the, what? what are you talking about? Or somebody speaks words of faith into us, and we think, no, you got that wrong, not me. That, that, that's just not me. We kind of go through a state of disbelief. So let's get into the scripture. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, to a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and the angel went to her and said, Greetings. Now imagine an angel coming to you, and he says, You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now, most of us, if we have felt God speaking to us in some way, that message is usually not delivered by an angel, right? Mary's is pretty unique in that way. It's usually we get a, a feeling in our own hearts or there's an urging inside of us that we're going to do something or sometimes people speak words of faith to us and, and then God uses that. My point is God has a way of getting his words across to you. God will make it known to you. And when we hear it, it can really catch us off guard. Many of you have lived that, haven't you? Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. So Mary is already thinking, what in the world is going on? Why, why is he talking to me? Why would this angel come to me? What, what could I possibly do? What could God possibly want from me? The angel said to her, don't be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. And Mary's probably thinking just like we all do, right? I'm an ordinary person just trying to get by, just trying to survive. Why would God pay any attention to me? What could I possibly do? What could I possibly add? What could he possibly want from me? You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom, my friends, will never end. I could see myself in a similar situation where an angel has come and talking to me, and he starts ripping off all this information. I'd be like, hold it a minute. You know, I'm going to have to write this stuff down. I'm never going to remember all of that. You know, I'm going to make sure I'm going to get this. You got a pen, by the way? I don't know if I could have absorbed all that like maybe Mary did at that time. But the angel is telling her that she's going to give birth now to the Son of God. And this seems like average stuff to us because we've heard this story, right? We've heard this story many times. Every Christmas we tell this same story, but think about it. This angel of God comes to this person unexpectedly at the age of 13 and says, this is your calling. And we worry about being called to sing in the choir or something. 
But Mary manages to get through that first stage of being troubled, and she makes it to the second stage of our calling on God's life, where we, what do we do? We start to ask questions, right? We all got questions. We want to know. We want to be informed. We want to know what we're getting into. It doesn't work that way. It's what's called faith. But Mary asks a very good question. She says, how will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? Pretty good question, don't you think? Sort of a, she must have been logistically minded, because that's a pretty logistical question. How's that going to work, Mr. Angel? You know, how's that going to happen? How is this going to come to be? And I could go out on a limb here and say that I bet you that's not the only question she had. That may be the only one that was pertinent. That may be the only one that got recorded. But don't you bet she asked, what in the world am I going to tell my parents? What am I going to tell this guy that I'm, I'm, I'm going to be married to? He's not going to like that, right? He's probably not going to believe me. What are the people in my community going to think? What are they going to say about me? What about the rumors that are going around about me? How am I going to handle all of that? We got questions. But when God is leading us in some new direction, or God speaks to us in some way, yeah, we're going to have questions. But, but friends, maybe sometimes I think we ought to just stop asking all the questions and think about God. Because what is it that God can't do? We can do all things through God, right? Through, all, through God, all things are possible. Amen? All right, somebody give me a head nod or something. Let me know you're with me here. In the natural world, what this angel is telling Mary seems impossible, doesn't it? Sometimes when God tells us it, it, with the calling he's placing on our life, in the natural world, it seems impossible. But we serve a supernatural God. He doesn't worry about the natural world. And we look at it all wrong. We look at it from our own perspective. Me, me, I, I, how will I do this? How's this going to affect me? How will I ever be able to pull this off? Don't worry about God. He's got you. If God is calling you in some new direction, He will tell you what you need to know when you need to know it. He will equip you with whatever it is you need when you need it, and he won't leave you. That's how it works. We don't get to know it all at once, because if we did, let's face it, we'd mess it up. We'd fix it. We'd change it to suit ourselves. And yes, we may struggle in our calling. He never promises us to make it easy. We're going to experience doubts. We may even fail a few times. But if God is with us, who can be against us? And the last phase is when we finally accept this calling on our lives. Yeah, that's right. Sooner or later, you got to accept it or reject it. But it. And this is where I think a lot of people make a mistake. Once they think that they've accepted this calling on their life, that everything now is going to be easy. You know, God's going to roll out the red carpet and everything in my life is going to be easy. That's not how it works. That's not how life goes. It didn't go that way for Mary. What happens when she told Joseph? He wanted to divorce her. He wanted to leave her. He wanted to go away. Maybe her mother got all upset. That news didn't go over well initially. But she didn't give up. She stayed with it because she knew God was with her. The angel answered, said, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. Listen to this last part. For no word from God will ever fail. So if God has spoken to you in some way, just like Mary, then he's with you. I know people will think, well, 
Pastor, you don't understand. I tried this and that and this. That didn't work and on and on and on. Well, just, just think about Mary for a minute and how all this unfolded for her. First, she, her boyfriend threatened to leave her, right, and never to marry her. Her parents likely got upset. You know, the town gossiped about her, right? So she had to live through all that. Then it was time to have a baby. What did they do? Well, they got on a donkey and had to take a three- or four-day trip to Bethlehem. And then what happens when she gets there? There's no room in the inn, and they put her into a barn for the baby to be born. And they put the baby in a feeding trough, a manger. Not the ideal way for your baby to be born, is it? Things probably didn't go the way she thought they would. Don't you think that she probably thought, God's son is going to be born in some grand fashion. I just know it. God would never let his son be born in a barn or a pile of hay. Do you think when that happened, she had doubts? Do you think she said, man, maybe I got this wrong. God would have never let his son be born in this fashion. The one thing that stuck to me, that stuck with me, that video we watched this morning, is what Mary's mother said there at the end. Let's see what God can do. Sometimes we say, well, let me see what I can do. No, let's see what God can do. Mary, eventually, eventually, I'm sure she accepted this calling on her life. She may have had questions. She may have had concerns. The road may not have been easy, and her mother and Joseph and everybody eventually got on board with this calling on their life. I like when Mary just says to the angel, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answers. May your word be fulfilled in me. How many of us can say that when God put a calling on our life or called us to lead us in some way, that we just said, okay, God, I'm with you. May your word be fulfilled in me. Or did we start having all the questions? Or did we say, God, you probably made a mistake, not me. Think about what a leap of faith that is to just say, okay, I'm with you. Saying yes to God in your life is a huge act of faith. And something to notice about her calling is that God didn't give her all the information, did he? Giving birth to God's son didn't come with an instruction manual. He didn't lay out everything that you could expect. He didn't say, we are going to encounter all these difficulties along the way. He didn't tell her everything that she was going to encounter. It just doesn't work that way. All right, Christy, to come on up, and we'll try to close out this morning. Friends, we, um, we serve an awesome God, a God who is capable of doing all things, supernatural things that we never dreamed, and he uses ordinary people just like you and me, just like Mary was an ordinary girl, Joseph an ordinary man. But we have to be willing to say yes. We have to be willing to do that walk of faith because that's really what our life is. Every day is a little bit of a walk of faith as a Christian. Every day when you get up, God, God is doing things in your life. God is working in your life. God is putting people in your path. God is presenting you opportunities. It's there every single day if you're noticing. Every day is a walk of faith. We have to find it within ourselves to look for it, to accept it. Because the final phase in God's calling is when we are at peace with it. Yes, we may be troubled when we hear it. We may ask a lot of questions when we consider it. And we may accept it. But sooner or later, we get at peace with who we are in Christ. We get, are at peace with what God's calling has placed on our life. 
I think what we stumble over is that we view everything through the lens of this natural world that we live in. We look at things just like Mary did. How will this happen? How will this be? Right? They look through, it through the lens of the natural world and we serve a supernatural God. We can, oh man, we can never break free of the constraints that this world tries to impose on us if we can't manage to, to take that leap of faith. There are many times since I've been the pastor of this church, I heard, well, we can't do that. There's, there's no way we can do that. We can't pull that off. We don't have the money for this or that. But God has always provided. We serve a supernatural God that has no limitations. The only limitations he has is what we put on him. Jesus came into this world to restore our relationship with our Father. And the thing I think that we often forget is that we have that Spirit of God, that Spirit, that Holy Spirit that lives within us, that same supernatural power that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. We forget who we are. We forget that we are a child of the Most High God, whom He loves dearly. And He did not spare anything for, for our lives. So this, this Advent season, if you can't receive anything else, if you can't get anything else out of all that we talk about, out of all, all the times that we're going to talk about in, in the future and the Christmas Eve service and all those things, I just want you to, to, to receive this one thing, that God's Holy Spirit is in you. That, that supernatural power is within you. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But it's there. You just got to find out how to tap into it. How to expand upon it. How to use it. How to, how, to, how to use that for God's kingdom. How to communicate with God through the spirit that's already there. Just waiting for you. Waiting for you to figure it out. Maybe he's waiting for you to just accept it and be at peace with it. I'm going to invite you, if you can, let's stand and sing our closing song.